The interesting thing about slices is that they can be determined automatically. That is, a slicing tool can automatically determine backward slices of individual statements and forward slices of individual statements. Such static slicing tools, therefore, can help you focus on specific parts of the program telling you the possible influences either of a statement or the possible influences towards a statement. Such slices become even more interesting, though, when we apply them not only to programs, but to actual executions. These are then called dynamic slices. These apply to executions instead of programs. That is, rather than reasoning in a program where a value came from, you look at the actual execution, typically the failing execution, and therefore not only know what could have happened, but actually see what has happened. The base of a dynamic slice is not the program, but a trace instead. A trace lists the statements in the program in the order in which they were executed. So if line 3, for instance, was executed four times in a row, then the trace will contain line 3 four times, followed by line 4, followed by line 5, and possibly going back to line 3 in case there's a loop. Within the trace, we can now look again at dependencies, that is, to looking at which variables have been read and which variables have been written. And if we find, say, that at the bottom of the trace some variable is wrong, we cannot trace back the dependencies in the execution and, again, use this as a base for debugging when following back the cause-effect chain through the program. The first thing we need for this is a trace. Let me show you how to get traces for Python programs. So here again, we have our original remove HTML markup function. And what I've written down here is, again, a tracing function, which accesses the file name of the code, as well as the current line numbers that's executed, and we print this out on standard output. We record this as a tracing function. Let's use the buggy version of the remove HTML markup function here, in order to have some more fun. And we feed it with this very simple input, just two characters, double quote, and less than sign, which should expose the error. If we now go and execute this, then we should be able to see a sequence of lines as they're executed. And we click on Run. And what we see here is that first line 4 was executed, then line 5, then line 6, then line 9, then line 11, line 13, line 14. And this is how we progress through the program execution. Now for a bit of programming exercise. Complete the program which you've just seen, such that it prints out the actual code lines instead of just the file name and number. That is, replace the output of file name and number by the actual code line that is in that file at this position.